What's going on guys, Hayden back. And in today's video, I'm gonna show you how to install an aftermarket Sidecane Apple CarPlay radio in your Mercedes SL500, SL55 AMG, basically any R230. And trust me, you're gonna like this video. So definitely make sure to watch it till the end. So check this out. This here is a 2003 Mercedes SL500. And I've already gone ahead and installed an aftermarket Sidecane stereo. Just to show you guys at first that it does indeed work. And what I'm gonna do is take this all apart, put it back to factory, and then I'm gonna show you how to actually install this. But check this out. As you can see on the screen, it is working and it is gorgeous. Touch screen, of course. And it really just makes the cab that much freaking better. Now, if we go back, you can see there's a ton of Android Auto and all these other different features on here that you can choose from. You even got Netflix and some other really cool stuff. But for the most part, I just really wanted CarPlay. And as you can see, I do have that up. And just so you guys can see, if I play one of my videos, non-copywritten, of course, listen. And check this out. Using the actual OEM buttons, we can increase the volume. So guys, if you want your car to sound like this and you want this installed on your car, then definitely stick around to the end of the video because I'm gonna show you exactly where I got this from and how to purchase this on Cycane's website because I know a lot of you guys in the Facebook forums were asking for it. Now, before I show you how to actually install the Cycane aftermarket radio, I wanna go over some recommended things that you should get as well as things you will have to get. And I also wanna talk about the difficulty installing this radio to kind of prepare you for what you're in for. Now, to start, I spent hours, and I mean probably 10 to 15 plus hours researching, looking up Mercedes-Benz forums on how to install the Sidecane radio, speaking with the Sidecane customer support, because of course, it's all in Chinese and they don't send you instructions on how to do this. It's pretty much, you have to figure this out on your own. So hopefully this video, I'm literally gonna walk you through it, hold your hand and show you how to install this so you won't have any of these problems that I did. Now for me, installing this without instructions, it was an eight out of 10. There was a lot of troubleshooting, but for you watching this video, it should be around a two to three, maybe a beginner approaching a moderate difficulty scale because it's pretty easy if it came with instructions. So I just wanna forewarn you of the difficulty difficulty installing this radio. Other than that, it's pretty simple. You just need a couple basic things. Now, yes, this is the factory head unit that I'm gonna go put back in the car in a little bit before I show you how to do that. But there's a few things you need to get. And then there's also a few things that I recommend you get. The first recommendation is picking up a magnetic tool. You can get this at Harbor Freight. And it's an extendable magnetic tool. Whether you get one that looks like this or you get one right here that looks like this. Ideally, the smaller the better. This is a lot easier to take out some of those screws and you'll see what I mean later on in the video. The second is you need, I, you must have a T20, uh, I believe a T20 Torx 20 uh, screwdriver or bit, X bit, whatever it is, that's what you need. You also need a T40. It could also be a T45, but I'm pretty sure it's a T40. You'll also need some sort, preferably a flex head ratchet, but any ratchet will do. Flex head is the better one. And then you will also need some sort of crimper, the wiring stuff that looks like this. You'll need one of these as well. And then you will also need to have this. This is very interesting. I'll put the part number to this down in the uh, description below, but this is a fiber optic bypass. And what this is used for is bypassing some of the voice controls, the phone, the multimedia CD disc that we're not gonna use with this new radio. You'll need to pick these up. So I recommend you pick up at least two of these, at least two of these. It's only $8. The next thing I highly recommend you pick up is this TTAT splice wire connector here. Very easy to use. It makes the installation so much easier. So definitely make sure to pick one of these up. I'll have a link to this down in the description below. You can get this on Amazon. It is super easy and it makes the job that much simpler. The next thing you will need is a probe tester or a fuse tester. Basically, it's just a lead that connects to ground and we can touch certain wires to get a voltage reading. This is highly recommended. I also recommend picking up some of these solder seal wire connectors. Now this isn't a necessity. You can use some heat shrink tubing, um, but this definitely is, makes the job a bit easier, but heat shrink tubing will do the same thing. And finally, the last thing that I recommend you pick up is this case here, super cheap. 
This is a trim removal kit, but really the most important thing that you need from this, if you find it separately, are these pin tool removals. This is how you depin uh, cables and connectors here. So there's a lot of connectors that we're gonna be dealing with on this car. You can see all of these, and some of these we're gonna have to modify them. And the only way to actually pull the pins out and move them is by getting something like this. So I went ahead and put the factory head unit back in the SL500. But before we start disassembling everything over here, I wanna kind of walk you through what we need to do first, and that's setting up the Cycane radio. Now, this is not the box that it originally comes with uh, because I threw it out. For starters, this wire here, we don't need. So I'm just putting aside everything that's pretty much extra. A lot of these, I marked them. This is the GPS unit here. Again, not needed unless you plan on hooking up your Cycane radio with like a, uh, you know, a SIM card to run internet. I think it's pointless. There's no reason to. This is a Wi-Fi antenna. Again, something I don't need. I have an iPhone. Same thing. This is another antenna too. It comes with two. I do have a backup camera kit. I haven't gotten around to installing this, but if you want to pay extra, you can pick one of these up as well. And then we have a few other connectors. We don't need to use this one here. And then we also don't need to use these. For those that want to know what exactly these are, one is for charging. I've already written down what these are too. One is for Apple CarPlay. This is wired Apple CarPlay. So if you want to plug in your phone, this is what you would use to get wired Apple CarPlay. And then this is just the charger. Again, because the way the factory head unit is over there, you're gonna have these dangling out or you'd have to drill through some of that display in order to put these in because with the Cycane head unit installed, there's nowhere to have these. You're gonna have to route them into the glove box. Or you're gonna have to drill through the trim to have these come out or route them into here. But that's a pain in the butt, there's no reason. So moving on from the stuff that you don't need to what you do need, right here I have the Cycane radio and I've unplugged everything so that I can walk you through plugging everything in. This is the easiest part. Then there's some challenging stuff, but for the most part, it's pretty simple. The first thing we can do is plug this in. This is for your radio here. So we'll plug that in, super simple. Goes right in the back here. This is for our backup camera. I haven't gotten around to installing that yet, but these only fit one way. They can only go. So this isn't gonna fit in here. You can try, but it won't. So this will only fit right here. That's the first one. We have the canvas decoder which we have to wire in. And then we have the fiber optic decoder as well. You must purchase this. This does not come with the radio. As you're purchasing the radio, it will give you the option to add this as an accessory. You have to purchase this in order to get the fiber optic lines that this possesses for the amp, for your multimedia stuff to work. You have to get the decoder. And this is the major key point right here. So next thing we can install, we can take this big wiring case here. And things get confusing because it doesn't come with instructions. Cycane, for whatever reason, doesn't. I went back and forth for a very long time with, like I said, customer service, and they were of zero help. And I'll show you more about that later. I went ahead and marked this out. You can do this too. So a lot of these you don't need unless you have a secondary amp. But I got super confused, and this took a long time to figure out which we need to use because, as you can see, there's two red and there's two white. So which ones do we use? Some of them say auxiliary right out, and then some say auxiliary right in. Well, I marked it. We're not gonna use the ins. The only ones we're gonna be using are these two, auxiliary left out and auxiliary right out. And you can see I've went ahead and marked the tops of these so that I don't get confused when going to reinstall it. Now, the next thing we need to move on to is this cable right here. So we're gonna go ahead and plug these in. Like I said, again, they only fit one way. So we're gonna plug this one in right over here just like that. And then we plug this into the harness right here. You'll hear a click, that's how you know it's in. And then this stuff right here is gonna go into the factory wiring harness. And um, this is very important. We're gonna need this one as well. This canvas one comes with one canvas here. This is important because this has to connect to this over here. Now, you guys can see this is connected here. When you go ahead and purchase the kit, this is not what it's gonna look like. It's gonna be separate. You're not gonna have this wire here. This is not gonna be here. I did this myself, as I said before, using those, uh, you know, soldering wires here. You're gonna have this green one or this blue one is gonna be attached over here. 
and then this is gonna be over here. Now, if you wanna go ahead and do this beforehand, you can. Uh, this is not how it's going to come from the factory here. And on that note, here is a photo of what the radio comes with, everything without actually messing with the wires. I was going back and forth with Cycane customer service. They are horrible. Do not spend a minute reaching out to them. They are absolutely terrible. But you can see this is what the actual wire looks like, how it comes with these two over here and then the two over here. And shortly you'll see uh, what it is that I did to this wire, or you already got a glimpse of it, but I did have to unpin this middle one right here and move it around. And then I had a lower this pin further down. So moving on to the next photo though, this is what they sent me. And this is the incorrect one, which is why I've been going back and forth with the Cycane customer service. This is not the correct connector. If you get this connector, you will have to repin it. It's, it's that simple here. But I just wanna show you what it will come with from the factory so that we have the same thing and you know what to work with here. You can see in this email here with Cycane after sales, it says, there is no problem with the decoding box. It is compatible please connect it according to the following wiring method and turn it on first. And they say it so simply, but you can clearly see that this one is different than the one that they sent me. This is the one that they sent me and this is the one that they are referencing here. You can clearly tell this has some fuzzy foam over it and this one does it. And what that means too, is that these on this one is pinned correctly. This is pinned incorrectly here. So check it out. I just wanted to compare it. I took this photo and I flipped it sideways. So now you can see this is what they sent me and this is what I was supposed to have gotten sent. So if you're one of the lucky ones that received this one here, you should be able to plug it directly in. And then all you'll have to worry about is the D to B wire, which is this blue wire right here. This is the wire that we connect into this pin over here. But if you were the lucky one and you received this one, you should be all right. Otherwise, if you got this one, you will have to de-pin and move some stuff around. But either way, it, it's pretty easy uh, with my instructions. I also put these connectors on. And again, this is not how it's gonna come from the factory. You have to put these on yourself. And as we're installing it in the car, I'll explain more about that with you here. Now you can see I've modified this a bit and there's a reason for that. And this is super important because this took the longest time to figure out. You have to tap into the D to B wake up here. And in order to do that, you have to pretty much de-pin this connector here. And that's confusing. If you get the one from Cycane that has this fuzzy tape over it, then you should be all right. It should be pinned correctly. Unfortunately, Cycane sent me this and they would refuse to send me a different one here. So I had to make this work. If you get this one, which probably most of you will, then you have to de-pin this and pin it correctly because this will not fit. The pins will not line up correctly with the pins in there. And I'll show you later on what I mean by that. But take a look in here. You can see if you looked at this one to how it will look on yours, it's going to be different and that's okay. I'll just show you the back here to make it simple. I move these two pins here. When I first received that, these two pins we're up top here, and then this one and this one were together on the bottom here. So I moved it so that it can look like this. This is how you're gonna have to have it. Two on the bottom left, one up top right here, and this is useless. Like, you don't even need this one. You can cut this off. There's no point. I just left it in and you can see I left it in. This is how it would look. I put some tape over the end so that we don't connect anything, but it has the same connector as that. And then the last one I put here for pin 10 and I've connected that to the D2B wake up. And this one right here, what we're gonna do is we're gonna plug this one into this one right here. So these two plug together. Okay, so I've plugged these in right here. Now, if you wanna save yourself the trouble before we go ahead and install and de uh, disassemble here, I highly recommend maybe you do this first and it'll make it a lot easier for yourself. So go ahead and do some prep work now. You can take this. I used the blue ones. I found that these fit the best. And we're gonna take three of these here and we're gonna put these connectors here on each of these. We're gonna put it on the red. We're gonna put it on the B for battery and we're gonna put it on the ground. If we do this now, it will save a lot of time when it comes to doing it there. So go ahead and do that and you need a crimper. So once we've put these three on, the next thing we're gonna have to do is this green, uh, this blue D to B wake up. What you need to do is you need to pull the pin. It could be either one of these here. 
First off, you need to move these down here, as I've shown, and then you need to pull one of these pins here. So I pulled this green one out of here and I moved it to the top right. You need to move it all the way up to the top right here. And then I've cut the end off. So no longer does it have this end here. And I've soldered them together using a lighter. And uh, this is it. This would complete the assembly. And then I just taped this off because we're not gonna be using that. Um, and we don't want that to touch anything and spark or mess up the audio system. Now, just as an example, in order to depin this type of connector and to move these around, I'm gonna use this wire. This is unneeded. And you can see what the end looks like on here, just for reference. So you can see this is what it looked like. There's no need for this, but I left it on uh, just because maybe in the future I'll use it. But if we wanted to depin this, what you need to do is pick up a kit like this. And with this here, what you need to do, as you can see, the pin is right here that I'm touching. What you need to do is insert this below it, just like that, and then push. And while you're pushing, this can come out. So now we can remove the pin and we can move it to where we want it to go. And that's how I moved these two wires to where they are on this side. You kind of have to make your own. I move these two over there and I move this over here. So ideally, this is all you will need is two on the bottom left and then one up here. Also, before I forget, we can go ahead and plug these two into the ones that we marked right over here. So we can plug these two in, which you can see is in Chinese but it's the auxiliary left out. We can plug these two together like such, and then we can take the auxiliary right in and plug it into the other one that we marked, the auxiliary right out. So it goes right in to right out and left in to left out. We plug these in just like that. And also to save more time, we can also go ahead and plug this yellow battery cable directly into the yellow thick battery cable that's on here. And you can test this by you know using a power probe but ideally it's the thickest yellow cable so if we go into the main harness here is the main harness that we'll be plugging into the radio here separate the thickest cable here and you want to tap into that so we can get constant power b plus battery is constant power and then you can simply insert this into here so with the fiber optic decoder with the yellow going to the battery yellow here, this is giving constant power. The only wires we have left to worry about are just these two right here. And I'll show you where we can plug these into in a second. So now that we have the Psychane radio correctly wired together, uh, we need to come over to the car and we need to start disassembling the center console part. And then we're gonna have to disassemble the back part here for the fiber optics. But the first thing we're gonna need to do is pull off this trim on both sides. It should come out pretty easy. There's just a couple of clips here. If this comes out just like that. And now do that to both sides. And then there are three screws. The first one is right here. The second one is right here. And then the third one is right here. They're the tiny ones. So let's do that now on both sides. Now, before you start unscrewing these bolts, it's extremely important to remember to hit that subscribe button and also the like button. So I know you wanna see more videos like this. So the next thing we're gonna need to do after taking out all three screws on each side, a six total, you can see they look like that. You wanna lift up this. Move that over here. And then what we're gonna need to do is take this out right here. And in order to do that, you're gonna wanna take your key, put it in accessory mode and put your foot on the brake. Make sure you put your foot on the brake. This is very important. You wanna pull this up like that and shift it into drive. Now what we can do with the foot still on the brake is lift this trim like this and we'll be able to separate the trim from the actual car and move it over. can take the car out of accessory mode now. Now with the center console trim slid over to the other side here and we throw this back into drive, we could take our foot off the brake. We need to remove a couple of screws. Uh, we have four screws, one, two, and then three, and then four. And then we have another two for the cup holders, one, and then there's two over there. What you can do is you can pop this trim off like this, lets me here just like that. And we can take the, the trim off. This will make the installation a bit easier. Just like that and put this away here. And now start off by taking the four screws out of the radio.
With the four screws taken out, we can slowly start to pull the head unit out. And there's gonna be quite a bit of connectors on the other side here that we need to take off. And some of them are pretty easy. Some of them are a pain in the butt. I'll show you how to do them now. You can see the first one right here. This is the fiber optic line. You just push down. The next clip you wanna push down and then pull out and slide it and it'll pull out. And you can kind of find this one you push in over here and pull out. All right, this one over here, you squeeze and you pull and you can pull that out. And we have three over here. This is this gray one, you push in and pull out just like that. This we can just pull out. And then the last one for the antenna, we just pull out like that. And now you have officially taken out the radio from the car and you can set this aside. We'll no longer use that. And a couple of these we're not gonna use and I'll explain more later. But the next thing we're gonna need to do is remove this here. And in order to do that, we have to remove these two screws on either side. So with the two screws removed, we can pull out the cup holders as this will not fit with the uh, Sycane head unit. So now it's time to install the Sycane radio into the factory harness. Now, the first thing you're gonna wanna do, which I ran into a bit of a problem, if you do receive this cable, which is the connector that doesn't have that fuzziness, that fuzzy tape over it, this is not gonna fit into the, the connector that actually needs to get plugged into. So what you're gonna have to do is remove this kind of harness that's on here in order for it to fit correctly into this cable that they gave us. And I know that's crazy, but that's just what they did. So it's kind of hit or miss as to which cable that you're gonna get. So in order to actually remove this here, what you're gonna need to do is peel this off. You can do that pretty easily, just like that. And then you need to slide this out here, just like that. See, they both came off. It's super simple once you get that clip off. And this is what you're gonna get left with. Now, this is important because we need to know where these cables are. You can see the two pin, there's two pins right here on the far left. And then on the top right, this is pin 10. And this is the D to B wake up, which we're gonna need to use later. And the reason we need those is because if you look at this, the one that we have modified here, the D to B wake up is this blue wire and the blue wire we've tethered to the far right pin. We had to move this. We had to de-pin this here and move it over here. And you can see over on this side, we had these pins right here and these bottom left two we've also moved down here because these two on the bottom left will touch the two right here. And then this pin up here on the top right will touch this pin right here. So this is how we have to organize it. All right, so it's time we install the aftermarket Sycane radio into the car itself. There's a bunch of wires you can see here that we're gonna use, some we aren't, uh, but we'll kind of walk through that ideally. Yeah, I'll just show you later. Um, the first thing we can plug in using the fiber optic decoder right there, take your orange cable here, this gets plugged into here and we could set that aside. The next thing we can plug in is we can take the FM radio, the antenna here, and that gets plugged in right here. Just push that down. The next stuff we got, we can move this over here. We got our big factory wiring harness and we need specifically this big one right here. And again, these only fit one way. So you're not gonna accidentally plug something in incorrectly here. You'll see like if you try to put it in here, it won't, it won't clip in. So put it in the top one and boom, just like that, that's clipped in. Now moving forward, we're left with uh, two things. We have right here, this is that connector that we made. And what we're gonna do is take this one right here. This is the pin that we, we, had, to, we had to take the cover off of here. And looking at it like this, you can see the two pins right here. This is gonna go just so we have it facing properly into the two pins right here, just like this and you can see, it. you'll know when it's in. You're gonna have to play with it. Since we had to take the case off, it doesn't always fit perfect, but now we know. It'll it'll fit in and it squeezes in nice. And what I like to do now is I like to tape this up just so this doesn't accidentally come out when we're putting things back together. So with some electrical tape, just tape over this. However, it doesn't really, there's no specific way to do this, but just make sure these wires don't come out and we're just making sure that the clip stays in and doesn't pull itself out and that should be enough. And now we're good to go. And that's kind of seals everything in because Sycane doesn't like to give us the correct clip or half of us get the correct clip. Uh, and the last stuff we're gonna have to deal with, and you can see how this wire connects to the up here, and this is the D to B wake up. 
we have two things left on our fiber optic decoder right here. The last two that we have to plug in, remember these two? We'll, we'll have three specifically, but we already plugged one in. You remember our fiber optic decoder that has these wires? It has the fiber optic line we plugged in. And then we have the red that isn't plugged in, the black. We have the yellow, which we plugged into the, the Sycane radio harness here. You can see we tapped into this because this draws power from the big line right here. This plugs into the, the yellow and the yellow is constant power because we're looking for constant battery. And I'll show you how we can test that in a second. The next two things we need, we need to test for is accessory and ground. So in order to do that, and I'll show you, you get the power probe that we have here and you need to find somewhere to ground it out. I use this thing right here. And what you're gonna do is you take the little clip the gator clips and we're going to clip it on here and that's going to ground us so with the power probe for example if we were to tap into our yellow which is b for battery we should get a constant power look at that so the car is off and we don't have the keys in the ignition but the battery is constantly getting fed to the yellow and you can see right there 12.4 volts and that's how we tapped into that and that also feeds up to this wire here it's a little hard for me to test for but if I was to put this in here, you can see 12.4 volts. And that goes into the yellow one, which is right here. And that also gives you 12.4 volts. And that will go into our B. Now we're left with the other two. We have ground and we have accessory. Accessory is 12 volts when the car is in accessory mode. So how we would do that is if we move this over here, I tapped into the cigarette lighter. You can see right here, this is the cigarette lighter. Now, obviously I always recommend to use the power probe because your car might be different. You might not have these colors like my car does. But what we're gonna do is you can see we have a brown and then we have a green. And we have to plug these two into them. Ground is typically brown, so we can plug this into here. Let me just make sure. You also wanna double check because sometimes you're not actually getting the clip in correctly here. So now we have ground. The last thing we have is accessory, which is red. Red is gonna go into our green and black wire. But again, how we would test for that is you can see, if I put this in here currently, we're not gonna get any power because the car isn't an accessory. But if I turn the car on to accessory mode and then I test for it, you can see now that we get power. So that's power when the car is an accessory. So that means we can take our red and we can put the red into that connector that we added. And you should know, hopefully I don't need to explain how the, uh, connectors work you just kind of wrap them around and push them in and they'll clip down on that it's it's pretty self-explanatory there but that is how we officially wire everything into here and also we're going to have some leftover wires so don't don't get worried if things are left unplugged these three here we don't use some of these are for the multimedia some of these are for the cell the telephone that comes in the mercedes and the other one i forget is for the voice control uh that the car comes with the voice command we don't need these so just set these aside there's no point to using them at this point with everything plugged in we can double check our work now we're still not going to hear sound because we need to do the bypass for the fiber optic cables but we can at least check and make sure that power is going to hear that the campus decoder works with the steering wheel buttons and all you got to do is just put it in accessory mode and as you can see it powered right up it might load the sidecan screen but everything is working here we have the touch screen. Again, we're not gonna know if the radio works or the sound until we test everything in the back and get everything in the back connected correctly. But if we press the button here, you can see, ignore the sound because the sound already works, but uh, you can see how it controls the screen over there. Uh, the next thing we need to do, like I said, install everything back together, and then we can work on part two, which is bypassing the fiber optic lines. And now the next thing we need to do is just fish all these wires back into the car, into the box up here. And then we can go ahead and put this back on here and put the screws back in and reassemble this because we've officially finished assembling the, the radio into the car. Now at this point, you should have the aftermarket Sycane radio installed into the car, but you still won't hear sound. And the reason for that is you remember there was a couple of cables that we left unplugged 
in the back of the radio. And the reason being is the the old radio, the uh, the old head unit powered a few things that this new radio doesn't. For example, the old radio powered inside the car, we have, if I can open it up, there is the phone thing right here. You have like the Mercedes phone that comes in this car, that's one thing. You then have a multimedia CD disc player. That's number two. Number three is the voice control module, like the voice commands. So because there's no more power going to the voice control box, the cell phone that's in the car, as well as the CD multimedia player, what it's doing is it's breaking the fiber optic loop. What we need, so that means that there's no power actually going to the amp and sending power to the radio. That's why we don't have sound. So what we need to do is fix the break in the fiber optic loop, which means we need to take out those three modules that no longer have power. And we can do that by using that little Mercedes bypass thing that I showed you earlier. I'm gonna show you now how to get to all those and how to take all those out of the loop so that the only two things that are left is the radio, the fiber optic cable going to the radio, and the fiber optic cable going to the amplifier. Those are the two things that need to have the loop connected. Everything else needs to be removed. Now it's time to start removing the rear trim so we can access the fiber optic cables. The trim is really easy to remove and it's all held down by T20 screws. And then in the driver's cubby, there are two T40s or maybe even T45s. Alrighty guys, so check it out. We've officially disassembled all the rear trim that's needed for us to access the fiber optic lines. Now I wanna show you where these are. Now, unfortunately, I've already disconnected them. That's why I have the radio working, but I'm still gonna show you where these clips would be and where you need to disconnect them and how you would actually go around installing, per se, one of those uh, fiber optic disconnects, which you can see is right here. There's a bypass that I put in right here. So this is the uh, module for the cell phone. And on the side down in here, you'll be able to disconnect and pull out one of these fiber optic cables is this thing is gonna be in here connected inside of it. And what you're gonna do is you're gonna unplug it. You're gonna take it out if I can, and then you're gonna separate this piece here. So what you'll do is you can just pry this out you might need to use a screwdriver, but basically you wanna take this casing off like this, and you're gonna take these two connectors here. You're gonna take this bypass, and you'd put one end in here like that and clip it, and then you're gonna put the other end in here and clip it, and this is how you would bypass that connector. So now that we've disconnected the first module, we're looking for two more. And you can see this, like I said before, is the one that would go to here, which we bypassed. This is the one for the amp. You can see that connector is all the way down in here. Like you can feel it with your hands. That connector all the way, it's gonna be impossible for me to show you, but this wire here is the one that goes to the amp. We need to leave that in. And you can see these route to other spots in here that we need to bypass. So these are gonna be tricky, but you're gonna to have to look in here and find the other two. Let me hop to the other side. So the next thing you're gonna to wanna to disconnect is the one that comes right in here. Uh, this is the second one that you're gonna to have to bypass. You unplug it and you put a bypass on there. And then I, there might actually be a third one somewhere in here, just go look for that. And then the fourth one is gonna be the CD multimedia player. If you have that, you'll actually be able to pull out the cable from in this box here. And then you'll be able to access that next cable, next fiber optic that goes into the box. So I think there's four that you're looking for. And then when you have everything disconnected, if you're able to, which is what I did, is I was able to reduce the amount of fiber optic line. I actually pulled out that big wire that you saw. Um, I was able to remove it here and that's what actually got it to work a lot better. So make sure if you can, 
If you're this far in, try to reduce the amount of fiber optic line that you have in here. As you can see, really the only thing that we have now is this one cable that goes right here. This is looped and then it goes straight into the amp and then the other one comes up in here and this is the other fiber optic that we bypassed and then this feeds all the way through and to the radio and that's it because we removed all the other fiber optic lines. But once you have that installed, you can now go ahead and test your radio and it should work. So at this point, if we put this in here, put it in accessory and go to the radio, we should actually have sound coming through here. And that's how you'll know that you did everything correctly. And as you heard for that split second, we have power going to this and that's how you know you did everything correctly. If you don't hear sound, then what you're gonna have to do is make sure that you unplugged all those fiber optic lines except for the amp and if you still don't have sound then you can obviously leave a comment down below or you have to take all this apart and double check all your connections which i've had to do a few times to make sure that everything is plugged in correctly and that power is going to everything that is supposed to have power when it's supposed to have power That is how you install an aftermarket Cycane radio on a 2001, 23, SL500, SL55 AMG, and all the other ones I don't remember on all those cars on the R230 platform. This was quite a complex install, but uh, with instructions, hopefully it should be super easy. I wish I had a video like this when I was installing this because it would have taken me just a couple of hours to do this instead of, it took me probably like two to three weeks to figure this all out. But like I said, if you have any questions at all, let's say you get stuck at a certain part, it's not working, something like that, feel free. I urge you, leave a comment down in the comment section below and I will ex try to do my best to answer all your questions. Now, uh, I wanna show you how to actually go around purchasing the Cycane radio, everything that you would need on the website. So stay tuned for that. So in order to purchase the Cycane radio, all you'll need to do is click the link down in the description below, and then you'll get brought to this landing page here. And then as it's as simple as clicking this box right here for the 0104 Mercedes SL, because I have a 2003 R230. So we click on this and it'll bring you to a new page. And this is the radio that we need to purchase. Now, there's certain things that we have to order and you just read along with this here. But if this page doesn't pop up, you can just search you know, copy this or search this, but I'll put a link to it down in the description below, like I said, um, but you can see here. So the Ram, you know, feel free to choose which one you want. I chose this one here and you'll see as we add these on, the price is gonna increase. So we have supports Mercedes SL 2001 to 2004 uh, optical fiber amplifier. This is the one that I had and this is what you saw in the video. I don't know how this will fit in an 05 to 08 in regards to the fiber optic cable. I don't know if it's the same thing. It could be the same thing that I just did. But for me, for the between the 01 and 04 that year, this is what you have to purchase. And this is what you saw in my video, me using. Then you have the options here. You have the vision parking camera, surround view car camera, so on and so forth here. I believe I just chose the HD Sony CCD rear view camera and that was it. And then that was everything that I purchased. It's that simple. They do have some other options if you wanna add on but it's literally that easy. You click add to cart, it brings the total to 521, and then you check out here. And if I can find you a discount code in time for this video to release, I will gladly put it in the description down below for you guys to use, and hopefully it will help the channel. But if you guys have made it to the end of this video, then you know thank you so much for watching. Definitely make sure to leave a comment and let me know what you think. And if you've done this yourself, I'd love to hear how your process went. But with that being said, smash that like button, turn on post notifications, subscribe, and I will see you in the next video. Peace.